time for the big three. Three stocks, three charts, three trades. Ben Lichtenstein will take us through the charts. Here to take us through the trades, Scott Bauer, CEO of Prosper Trading Academy, live at the SIBO. A lot of action there. Um, how are you feeling? What's the vibe of folks today, Scott? Uh, the vibe is a little bit of a surprise, I think, um, just given the rally that, that we have had and then, you know, the eco data that came out this morning and seeing, you know, 80, I'm looking up here, 80 point move in the S&Ps right now, I think caught a lot of people by surprise. Yeah, look, right? I mean, it is a pretty big day today. I don't disagree. Um, that being said, let's take a look and, and it really tacks on. To the other days, sometimes after a lot of up days, you'll have a, a pullback exactly. day, right? Um, but not today. Yep. Let's get to the first name. You're looking at Nike first up. Why is that? Well, you know, a couple of things. First, th this stock has kind of been left <laughs> left uh, for dead for a long time. And, you know, the Elliott stake, the Elliott news that came out, obviously, was, you know, massive, massive shot in the arm for this stock here. So with this recent move here, we're up through some really big resistance that had been out there. And that could really turn the tide for Nike here. And this is really, in my opinion, possibly on a trajectory to get back up to the mid 90s or so where there is a big gap fill. Obviously, you know, the market rally certainly helps as well. The news from start, you know, that that caused Starbucks to run and then Nike right afterwards is very beneficial as well. But you know what, if this continues here and, and we get up towards that gap fill, you know, Nike could be back. So because of this, because I see an upward trajectory, I'm buying a September call spread, the 82 and a half, 87 and a half call spread. And I think we continue to run here. I see. Let's see what Ben thinks about the technicals, if that's a possibility here in his opinion. Ben? Nicole, they definitely have the shoes laced up. They've uh, at the starting block. I'm not sure that they're going to run at this point, but I would agree with Scott in terms of that 90, mid-90 level being significant. Let's take a look first and foremost at the rally that we have seen. I guess one could argue they've been on a bit of a run. A uh, nice move up throughout the week from well around that $74 level all the way up to just shy of 83. This is a textbook example of what I like to look for. A five minute candle chart where you see migration of value, three separate areas and at every $4 increment 74, 78, 82 the market's kind of paused and regained composure. The bulls are looking for another breakout to the upside and new area of value to form at a higher level. Now uh, this is about as good as it gets in some ways. Scott mentioned the significance associated with the 90, mid $90 level. I like that, right? 93 is what the Bulls need to get up above before they can really declare a victory here. But he also mentioned how we've taken out some key resistance. Those July highs were kind of stacked up around this 76, 77, $78 level. So big move up here into this elevator shaft we saw in reaction to earnings. This is the first indication that they're trying to turn something around. And at a key level, Nicole, we're right back down to, well, near those pandemic lows, testing a lower extreme of a range. We've been in going all the way back to we're talking uh, 2010. Uh, I'm sorry, 2018. I mean, uh, uh, 2019 uh, pre-pandemic. And you can see again, just coming off the lower extreme, still some heavy lifting to do for the bulls here, though, as I mentioned on that four hour candle chart, 93 is the big level here on this weekly. They need to get up above 130, but potentially the start of something big here. That's for sure, as we're seeing a little bit of a turnaround over the last few days. All right, let's see what levels they can actually hit. So some heavy left lifting to get some of those upper levels. Scott? Yeah, I, you know, I, I agree with everything Ben said here. And with the position that I'm putting on, I don't need it to get all the way up to that gap fill around, you know, 93, 94. But if it does fill up there, and it holds and, the, and, and it continues with some momentum here, then, yeah, I mean, we're going to see 100 pretty quick if, if it does get up there and continue through. All right, next up, Shopify. What do you think of that one? That's been doing well. Boy, this it is. This thing's been on a tear since earnings and just closed above the 200-day moving average for the first time since back in May. So this is now pointing technically to another gap fill, just like we talked about in Nike, but another gap fill, which here is right around 77. And there's not much technical you know, resistance all the way up until there. So I think if shop can hold above 70 here, which would be critical for me, 
then yeah, we're, we're gonna shoot right for that gap fill here. Also, because implied volatility in shop, option volatility, option premium is so inexpensive right now, I'm just gonna buy some naked calls here. I'm gonna buy the September 80s. You can do that for right around a dollar or so, and I think that is a really inexpensive play for the upside here. Yeah, yeah. Let's see what uh, the charts say here, because we have had that recent move up. Some of your thoughts, Ben. Nicole, I can understand the a little bit more aggressive approach towards this one because uh, in our last example, we were talking about Nike still needing to get above 93, that uh, key level in the intermediate time frame. In this example, you're going to see shop is right at that, potentially taking that level out as we speak. It coincides with the $73, $74 level. But kind of in line with uh, our normal uh, way of working through the charts, I just wanted to start with a more granular time frame, a five minute, and a look at some of the price activity we've seen this week. Much like Nike rallying a big move top left, I'm sorry, bottom left to top right, and an easily identifiable trend to the upside shop has been and continues to be uh, enjoying some gains here. Let's just move away from the five minute candle chart to show you what's going on in terms of the uh, intermediate, the four hour, because you can see again, we've been in a bit of a downward trend, 92 all the way to the recent lows around 48, 49, but starting to reverse that, a V bottom, which is encouraging. That communicates again that uh, they've rejected that lower level, simply put. Energy through the middle of the range, 60 targets the upper extreme. We've talked about this multiple times. That was 68 to 70, and now we're really trying to take out this key area that was established on the way down, reversing this bearish pattern that's been playing out. So definitely some green shoots here. Let's take a look. Shopify, as Scott mentioned, into and through this mid $70 level, some room to run here. I would completely agree because then you open up a door for, again, similarly as we just talked about, uh, some room to the upside, simply put, as we could retest that $90 level if we continue to see energy above 65 here. The other thing I will point to, while this, I think, on this longer-term daily candle chart still a bit of a bearish pattern again with some kind of wiggle room is I guess the best way of putting it before we reverse that pattern and and the bears uh, have to declare that they've lost control but at, at this point Nicole again we are seeing a little bit of a big comeback into play here so higher lows also a nice move off the uh, October 2022 low you can see that the bulls have been trying to get something going here and, and again starting to above the 65 level all right any final thoughts on this one here, Scott? No, agreed. And, and what I really like about this one, and, and Ben alluded to it being more aggressive, it allows me to be more aggressive because option premium is so cheap. All right, next up, we have Fortinet in a very hot sector. Um, some of your thoughts on Fortinet. Yes. Yes, and you know I'm going to go with the trifecta on the bullish side here today. Uh, Fortinet has really been one of the leaders in cybersecurity recently. Now it is at a make or break level. This this one is to me a little bit more, a little bit dicier, if you will, than Nike and Shopify to the upside. It's at a make or break level, and that 74 range has been real difficult to crack in Fortinet. But I love the momentum trade here. It is you know out. out Outperforming in the sector. If it can break through there, that is a, a clear path to me up to 80, 83 area. So I do think there's some really nice upside here, but it is a little bit more of a make or break to me. So that being said, I'm doing a, a shorter term trade here, and I'm only going out a couple weeks to the end of the month, the August 30th. Uh, options because, like I said, it's going to be make or break. It's going to happen or it's not going to happen real quickly. So I like buying the 75 calls that expire on August 30th here. They're really cheap. If we get that break, if we can bust through that ceiling around 74, this thing's going to pay off handsomely. Understood. So a little uh, maybe more risk or uncertainty here, but you're going to find out pretty fast to your point. Let's see what Ben says about the technicals. Ben? Uh, Nicole, looks to me like a stock that's making it rather than uh, looking like it's going to break it at this point, uh, per Scott's thoughts there. At a key area of resistance right now, so again, has some proving still to do, but look at this rally. We'll break it down in a similar fashion as we have the other two names. And Scott, we are going to go three for three here, but no balloon drop today. We've had a problem with the whole thing that uh, 
uh, lets them go from the ceiling. I'm not sure what's going on. We got some technical difficulties with it. Hopefully we'll be able to resolve that. But hey, just taking a look at the uh, trend up, you can see on the 15 minute candle charts, migration of value, simply put 56, 65, 70, 73, moving away from that and into a longer term. I always talk about this, a wide range balance. So there's not a lot of conviction here, right? You see very random type price activity, but through the middle often opens up a door for a retest of that $78 level upper extreme. We're talking about highs from earlier this year back in February. And this is right here as we move into a longer term chart. Nicole, the daily candle chart is a very bullish pattern. High conviction into the middle of this uh, um, uh, longer term chart and then this consolidation that's occurred uh, since. It's just value that's forming at this upper level. 16, 23, 60, you can see the areas where the market's paused and gone a bit sideways relative to this high conviction move we saw throughout the beginning of 2021 and into uh, the beginning of 2022. Again, where we've gone more sideways around 60, but energy, momentum, conviction, participation, and all the uh, TIONs right now opening up a door for a retest of this $81 level. I'd agree with Scott right now. Uh, and I would even, again, further it and say that they're, they're in the process of making it and uh, avoiding the latter of that make or break type scenario he talked about. All right. Um, Scott, any final thoughts? Well, you know, it's, it, it's I think you have to be cautiously optimistic in this marketplace. You know, there is nobody I know of, Nicole, not an analyst, not a trader out here that thought that we could have made this run in you know seven or eight trading days, whatever it is, since last Monday to be where we are right now. And another day today, I'm looking up here again with S&P's up 78 points. So, you know, is the eco data that good where it just lets the market continue like this? I'm not sure, but I am cautiously optimistic and with volatility way back down from where we saw it early last week here, I think it's another really good opportunity to buy some protection. Okay. Good to see you. Nice to see some action there in the background, well. too. Thank you both. Scott Bauer of Prosper Trading Academy and our own Ben Lichtenstein there.